the number of coronavirus infections are surging in the Midwest, all Midwestern states, except Ohio, reporting higher numbers in the last four weeks, with South Dakota seeing the largest percentage increase, up 166%. Nationally, the number of COVID-19 cases have now passed 7 million. Let's bring in a Dr. Wando Ulayuola. She is a chair and professor in the Department of Family and Community Medicine at Ohio State. It's great to have you on today. Let's talk about what you are seeing on the ground there. We pointed out Ohio, the state itself, uh, certainly an outlier when you look at the surges we've seen in cases across the Midwest, but we've also seen a, a recent outbreak at Ohio State University, uh, the biggest one that we have seen in the state. How are you seeing the push and pull right now on where the virus is headed. Yeah, thank you, Kiko. It's yeah, it's it's certainly an interesting time as we're seeing the growth. Um, Seven million cases in the United States. That's it's really a challenge, and over two hundred thousand people have died at this point now. Um, in Ohio, you know, to 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 be to be clear, we we do have increase in cases, which we're seeing in a number of different college campuses and college towns. Um, you, you're seeing similar cumulative uh, increases in cases at University of Georgia, at University of Alabama. And so I think as we're starting to have students come back onto campus and the schools start to open, we are seeing this student positivity um, increasing, which is something that we could have expected as we plan for the reopening, but it's here now with us. So now that it is here, how do you counter that? Yeah, I think you know there are a lot of things that we need to do. We are still, it's still very important that we're masking and that we're social distancing and that we're also testing. Uh, we, we saw a lot of the spike that has happened more recently, a result of schools reopening, but also a number of highly congested, congregated uh, parties and events over the Labor Day weekend. And so really still needs people to abide by the public health precautions that, that are out there really to, to stay at a distance from people, to wear your mask, to abide by all the different hygiene recommendations that are out there, and really just not to congregate in such large numbers as people are doing. We've seen the, the lag in the number of cases that tick up just a few weeks after the activity has changed. If you're talking about school reopenings, certainly a lot of guests we've been speaking to have said the uptick you're seeing right now is a result of some of those reopenings that we saw several weeks ago. Now you've got Florida Governor DeSantis coming out and saying he's going to be uh, lifting the restrictions on restaurants. You've got Indiana this weekend coming out and saying they're going to a phase five in the reopening, which would be full capacity for restaurants and gyms, among other areas. What does that suggest in terms of what we're likely to see two weeks, three weeks down the line? Yeah, no, it's a great it's a great question. I still think it's a little too early because we're entering the fall and the, the risk is going to be so much higher for us in the fall. In the fall, as you can imagine, the weather starts to change, it starts to get colder. And as we've been recommending that people, you know, if you if you do want to congregate, it's better to do it outside and, and when you've got space to be able to do that with outdoor air. But when you start to say it's um, it's colder and people will now shift a lot of their activity and engagement indoor, I think it's too early because as you said, rightfully you'll start to see the, the progress weeks after you make the changes. And so I think we need to give time to see what happens with the fall, what happens with the flu, what happens as people start to move indoors more and more when the weather gets colder, and then start to decide when, what is safe to do and, and how do we reopen safely when we get there. But I think it's too early to do it when we haven't yet seen the impact of the cold weather and the changes that will come in the fall. And to that point, we did hear Dr. Anthony Fauci saying that he wants to see the number of cases fall below 10,000 a day before flu season starts in October. We're well above that right now. How realistic is that number and how aggressive does the response right now against the virus need to be or need to change in order to meet that kind of goal? Yeah, no, I, uh, Dr. Fauci is absolutely right. I think the better positioned we are to enter the fall with a low number of cases, the better we will do when we get there. Uh, we're, we're, we're averaging 43,000 new cases every single day. And so um, that's a 16% increase from where we were just a week ago. And so we, this is the time, as I'm saying, like we really do need to make sure that we take the time to do it right now so that in the fall we'll be prepared. I think it's going to be hard for us given if everything stays as it is now and we've got you know, students back on campuses, schools are reopened, a lot of business are, are back as usual, and we try to do everything that we're doing right now, um, I think it's gonna be hard for us to get that number down as we enter the fall to the 10,000, uh, because we're, we're so far from it right now.
So, I mean, does that suggest that we're going to continue to see the 40,000 a day? Is that the trajectory of the virus in the short term? Yeah, I mean, the the I, I hope we don't, but I think that we we will. Um, you know, you know, there's also an opportunity for as the as the students do come back to their campuses and the schools have opened, and we start to uh, re kind of reinforce and restate the importance of the various public health precautions that they need to abide by. We can start to see behavior change, and if we do see that behavior change that we've been that we've been asking for then it is, it is possible that we can we can do better. So I'm not saying that it's a bleak outlook, but I do think that we'll just have to be very vigilant and, and aggressive in making sure that we, we adhere to what we've been asking. And finally, we have Novavax now entering the final stages of its clinical trials. Uh, I think we counted about five drug makers that are currently being supported by Operation Warp Speed. What do you make of the news that came out today? 10,000 patients uh, likely to be enrolled in the UK, and how should we be looking at this in the broader scheme of this race to try and get one of the vaccines at the very least to market? Yeah, I agree with you. We, 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 I hope that we'll be able to get one to market. I mean, we have over 40 uh, vaccine trials that are going on right now, and we have um, Novavax just moved to phase three, which means they've got a, a large scale um, high population efficacy testing uh, going on now, which is great. Uh, we have about 10 others that are in that phase two and phase three as well. So I think that we can, we'll, we're, we're moving along, the, the science is moving. I mean, it does take time to see if people will build and mount an antibody response to the virus. And so that's why you can't really get this done very quickly. And you also have to be very careful that um, they're not adverse side effects as a result of the vaccine. And so right now we don't have anything that's approved yet. I think, you know, Novavax is, is the big news because they have gotten to phase three. I, I believe they're going to have uh, 10,000 people in the UK that are going to be part of this. And so they have, uh, there's some excitement about it because um, in their earlier studies, and I don't think it's been uh published in the peer-reviewed literature yet, yet, but they did show that monkeys that were vaccinated did get some some pretty good protection. And so, you know, optimistic that we'll be able to get one of these eventually, you know, out for approval, but um, but they're, but they're, the race is definitely on and we're hoping that we'll get some good results from these. Yes, yeah, so a lot of questions to your point about the efficacy, yeah. the ability to scale up once these vaccines are approved. Dr. Wando Ulayawola, great to have you on today. Thanks, Akiko.